We gather to worship in the name of God who loves us, in the name of, of the Son who gives us new life, and in the name of the Spirit who brings wholeness and healing. Let us worship God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May our love for one another reflect the true love of God in Jesus Christ. in Christ. In this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us, 
and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as you're able. Let us pray together. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment on our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of the month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbors in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the member of the people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its heads, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The, the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual audience. A reading for First Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, Do not know what I, now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, do not wash my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for their feet, but this is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and then returned to the table he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you on an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. C.S. Lewis once said, to love is to be vulnerable. In our culture, when we value individualism and strength, we might look down on vulnerability and humility and see them as weaknesses. Tonight, Jesus shows us his vulnerability. 
and humility and his love for his disciples and indeed everyone that he met. Jesus loved everyone. And we hear about this again on this Monday, Thursday. Monday meaning a mandate or a commandment in the Latin tongue. So on this night, Jesus gives us his last commandment, his last mandate, to love one another as he loves us. But before we get to that actual commandment, and before we get to the reading, and before we get to the Last Supper, Jesus begins this evening out with some, something that some may consider a very strange thing. Jesus begins with washing of the feet. Foot washing is another radical action by Jesus. It's not a miracle that shows his holiness. It is an intentional act of service that shows the humanity of, of Jesus and the deep love and compassion he has for everyone who followed him. And it's important. It's important because it shows more of his humility. But it also requires that he who washes their feet also becomes vulnerable as, as well. You see, back then, only servants and slaves would wash their master's feet. It was a time of wearing sandals and, and walking on dusty roads. So when you came into the house, a slave or servant would be there to wash your feet to take the road's grime off. But tonight, Jesus tells us that he will wash his disciples' feet, all of them. Love displayed in this dirty task. Now Peter says, you will never wash my feet. And was it because, do you think Peter said this because he recognized the godliness of Jesus? Or was it because he was afraid to be vulnerable in front of his friends and in front of Jesus to be that person? In our gospel, we hear that Jesus washed all their feet. Peter, who was the first to refuse the foot washing. Peter, the one who later denies even knowing Jesus. Thomas, who we know will soon be filled with doubt and questions about the resurrection until Jesus finally comes and he can put his hand in Jesus' side. And even Judas. Even though Judas, he knew that Judas was about to betray him, Jesus even washed his feet. Jesus washed all their feet, fully knowing that they are going to fall asleep in a few hours on a mountaintop or on a hilltop when Jesus was about to pray, knowing that these men would run away when times got tough when Jesus was arrested. Jesus said he did this, this foot washing, this, this act of servitude as an example. Foot washing is a lowly, dirty example, a symbolic gesture, a metaphor for all service. Service done in loving response with gratitude for grace and for mercy that only comes from God. Think about it. Our feet, our feet are the lowliest parts of our body, literally. And, many, and, many, and for many, we often have perfect imperfections. I know that's why here at Gloria Day, when I suggest foot washing, nobody quite wants to do it. But feet are still very important. For most people, it is what gets us from one place to another. So how do we use our feet? 
Do we use our feet to run away from those who need us the most? Or do we run towards them with, with open arms? But Jesus is not the only one who washed feet. If you remember in scripture, Jesus also allowed his feet to be washed by Mary in order to set a different example. It was not to show his power or his control over this woman, but to be vulnerable, to be open, to be loved. And of course, Jesus became the most vulnerable person most of us know, allowing himself to be nailed to a cross in servitude to us for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus was and is God. But Jesus is also our friend, begging us into a deep relationship with him. And when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to each other, we enter into relationship with deep meaning and love for each other. For some, this evening's readings may be challenging. But the, words of, but the words of Jesus on this night might be, for some, the most important words Jesus ever said, and also some of the most difficult to follow. Love, as I have loved you. This is our mandate. This is our commandment. And Jesus doesn't give exceptions or, or qualifications or conditions. Jesus loves unconditionally. That's it. That's all. And he expects us to do the same. But we are not Jesus, are we? It's not always easy to do those kind of things. It can be downright difficult for us. It can be hard to love people who, who think differently, who act differently, who love differently, who look differently, and who worship differently. But that is, that is what Jesus commands of us. In order to love and be loved means to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to not hide our dirty feet, to not hide our dirty hearts or our dirty minds. Tonight, I want you to be open. On this Monday, Thursday, on this, this time of new commandments and new things about to happen, be open to the possibility that we may and probably do harbor discriminatory thoughts about others, right? To admit we might have fear and don't understand other people. To admit that we have been taught things about others that aren't necessarily true. To be willing to throw aside the old thoughts of well, I'm sad in my ways, or, you know, I'm just old-fashioned. If we are willing to break down walls, habits, assumptions, and false truths to get closer to one another, and not just those here in the congregation, but one another beyond these walls, and try to understand each other rather than trying to make the other people more like us. This means that we accept and are ready to act on Christ's command that we love everyone. And that perhaps may, we may have not been doing this our whole lives. That in the past we, we have heard this commandment for years probably and possibly we have not followed this. Simple words, really. This new commandment, love as I have loved you, 
And you see, when we talk about this love, it's, it's not a, a love like coming to somebody and saying, I love you. This love is an action word. This is a verb to be, to be put into to physical action. It is a service. Love is on the streets, in alleys, in hospitals and prisons. Love is in shelters and group homes, soup kitchens and bread lines. Love is in refugee camps and on our borders. Can we love as Jesus loves us? I don't know. Can we love like Jesus, even in those uncomfortable places? On this night, the night before he was put on a cross, Jesus tells his disciples and us this, that you love one another as I have loved you. And as challenging as that might be, and as difficult as it may seem, this is our simple commandment. This is our Monday. And if you do this, if you do this one thing, everyone will know that you are a follower of the Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. as you are able. Prayers of the Intercession. United in the servant love of God of Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you, from all the baptized into teachers of faith, from one generation to the next. Give your church hunger for your promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water that you have given, given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in the place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it.
those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministry of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, we lift to you in prayer, Mary, Ray, Tony, Lori, Linda, Nancy, Mark, Corey, Jay, Betty, Mary Ann, Laura, Julie, the Snell family, and the Wrinkle family, and all who serve in military and humanitarian efforts. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace. Thank you. 
Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all time and all creation, we give thanks and praise on this night for Jesus Christ, for the faithful and righteous life that he lived, for the journey he made during this week that we celebrate from exalted king to crucified Lord, and for the meal that he shared with his disciples where he revealed and shared his full self with those he cared for. Among friends gathered around a table, as they shared a meal, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you, promising that as they ate, they would share in his life and death and resurrection. After they finished eating, he shared a cup of wine, offering them a taste of the new covenant of life, sealed in his life. Be present with us now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And once again, this meal might be a chance for us to share in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this bread be the body for us. May this wine be the blood of our Lord. And the sharing of this feast, our participation in that meal of so long ago. Strengthen us by this meal for the journey ahead, that we might continue to walk with Christ along the road of his passion and death as we await his rising on Easter and to the fullness of new life. Through Christ, who shares this table with us even now, we pray. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come on this holy night, share this holy meal. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep the feast now and always. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. 
yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me one more hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the works of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are hold enthroned on the praises of Israel. In your uh, in you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their hands, heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights.
They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help comes quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the afflictions of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. <laughs> 